another exciting episode of Pretentious Internet Theater. I am your host, Andrew Cook. And when CEO of Sony, Michael Linton, said that he is a guy who doesn't see anything good having come from the internet, he took that statement completely back after listening to this program. Tonight, a tale of romance, intrigue, and vampires. Now, some may point to vampire lore and remember such greats as Dracula, who said that he would cross oceans of time to be with Mina Harker. At least uh, Gary Oldman did when he portrayed him in that one movie. But this story takes it one step further. As Edward and Bella don't cross oceans of time, but plunge deep into it. Let's get straight to this story. Enjoy. Pretentious Internet Theater presents Bella and Edward Go to Bikini Bottom. Written by the weird girl from down the road. Hosted on fanfiction.net. Bell and Edward go to the ocean to explore and end up in Bikini Bottom. See what happens! Disclaimer. I own nothing. Sigh. SM does, and whoever created SpongeBob does too. I'm tired. I haven't fallen asleep since yesterday. Bella, come on. We're going to miss our flight. My husband Edward yelled from downstairs. Oh yeah, we, as in Edward and me, are going to our second honeymoon. We're going to the same exact place we went the first time. L Mile. Okay, I'm coming, I yelled back, even though I didn't have to. I made my way downstairs, where all the suitcases were packed, courtesy of Alice. And next to Edward, my hubby, author's note, Hee hee hubby, sorry, bad speller. I walked over to him and gave him a quick bit, and turned to see our daughter Nessie. And Jacob went up to say goodbye and gave them both a quick hug and a kiss for Nessie. I was about to grab a suitcase when Edward beat me to it. Always a gentleman. I rolled my eyes. He quickly put the luggage in the Volvo at vampire speed and came back to me. Then he picked me up bridal style. I started to protest, but he just silenced me with a very long and passionate kiss. At vampire speed, he ran to the car. Author's note. I'm skipping the whole ride thing, because we all know how they get there. At Elm Isle. We made it there, finally. I'm starting to unpack things from the suitcases when Edward pops up out of nowhere and asks... Want to explore the ocean with me for a little while? I look at him and give him a warm smile and a nod of my head, signaling yes. He smiles, a crooked smile, and gives me a quick peck on my cheek. Okay, go get your bathing suit on, and I'll get mine on, he said while walking out of the door to get his suit on. I had mine on in five seconds, and Edward had his on in like two. Cheater. He stood by the bedroom door, waiting patiently for me as I walked at a human pace. As soon as I got there, I got an awesome idea. Want a race? So you can go to Father's? I challenged. He smirked and nodded. Wait till we get on the beach and in the water, and then we can race, he proposed instead. Okay, come on, I said as I bolted out the door laughing. You know, if you don't catch up, you're going to lose, Slowpoke. I laughed. Oh, no, you don't. Edward laughed as he chased after me. As Edward and I entered the water, we picked up speed, thrashing against the waves. As they tried to come to shore but failed, we kept going deeper and deeper and deeper until I couldn't see land anymore. And then they both drowned. The end. Well, it certainly was a short story on Pretentious Hesitant at the end of this time. Uh, next time, we'll try to bring you something a little more action-packed and uh, perhaps a little bit more length. But remember, you can always email me at pretentiousinternettheater at gmail.com. And there is much drama on the internet. But only the best makes pretentious... Oh, that wasn't the end of the story. I wish to apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I had assumed that since Bell and Edward were different than most vampires in vampire lore, that they would drown upon plunging so deep into the ocean and not rising to the surface. Of course, I'm, I, I do know that vampires do not use air the same way that you and I humans do. Um, there, there are some similarities between us and vampires. We have to use sunscreen to protect ourselves from the sun... And vampires simply cannot go out into the sun unless they're Bell and Edward, and then they can twinkle. Oh, I'm sorry, sparkle, and everything's all good to go. They don't even get a mouth sun rash. I'm just going to go back to the story. Let's throw logic out the window and pretend this never happened, okay? Thank you. Sorry. <coughs> Louis Flynn. Okay. <coughs> so, pardon, pardon me. <sighs> right, until I couldn't see land anymore. Author's note. Let's pretend vampires can speak underwater, okay? Good. Edward, where are... I stopped in sentence because of a big sign that said, Welcome to Bikini Bottom, right in front of my face. Where the crow are we, Edward? I all but shrieked at him. Um, uh, I don't know, Bella. Let's, uh... 
asked around, he stuttered. Wow, he never stuttered. Edward, who are we going to ask? There's no one but fish, and they cannot talk, I yelled. I beg to differ, said a high boyish voice. I almost screamed when I turned around and saw a talking sponge with pants, shoes, and a tie. EPOV. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Where the hell is that annoying voice coming from? Here I am, just having a race with my wife, when that annoying voice comes to my... Oh my god, it's somebody's mind. Where is he? Is he drowning? Wait, would that mean he was ready for death? Then is it a suicide? I was snapped out of my thoughts by Bella screaming, Where the crew are we, Edward? Oh crap, uh, um, uh, I don't know, Bella. Let's, uh, ask around, I stuttered. W-O-W, those must be the mutant fish I heard about from Patrick! The annoying voice sounded amused and closer. Edward, who are we going to ask? There's no one here but fish, and they cannot talk, she screamed at me. Crap, I don't know. Wow, that mutant fish is crabbier than Mr. Krabs. Hee 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 Wait, you can ask me, as we do speak. Be polite and calm, the annoying voice said, or thought. I beg to differ, came the annoying voice, as I turned around to D, a talking sponge, not something I see every day. My name is SpongeBob SquarePants! Author's note. Anyone want me to continue? I know it's weird, but if you do review, I fell asleep writing this. Uh... Chapter 2. Pineapple Meow Slappin' Silly. Author's note. Thank you, Tanya Usella, for being my first reviewer of the story. I won't have Edward and Bella blurt out that they are vampires, because that's just stupid. But SpongeBob might find out. Or not. Disclaimer. I don't own Twilight or SpongeBob. Sigh. I own two ferrets, though. Woot for me! But the downside is, one of them eats socks. My socks. I have holes in my socks. I feel like a hobo. Last time. Edward, who are we going to ask? There's no one here but fish, and they cannot talk, she screamed at me. Crap, I don't know. Wow, that mutant fish is crabbier than Mr. Krabs. Hee 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 Wait, you can ask me, as we do speak. Be polite and calm, the annoying voice said, or thought. I beg to differ, came the annoying voice, as I turned around to D, a talking sponge, not something I see every day. My name is SpongeBob SquarePants! EPOV. Hi, SpongeBob. My name's Edward, and this, I said, pointing to Bella, is Bella. Wow, these mutant fish are weirder than Squidward, and Squidward sounds like Edward. Maybe they're cousins, SpongeBob thought very loudly. Hi, Edward and Bella. Do you have any questions concerning where you are? Because I kind of overheard you conversation. He trailed off. Yes, we do. Now, can you please tell us where we are? Bella asked in a very sweet voice. SpongeBob started giggling. What the... Guys, don't giggle. Ah, yes, I can answer that question. You see, you are in Bikini Bottom, where fish, crabs, sponges, sparfishes, plankton, etc. live, breathe, and talk freely, and they eat Krabby Patties. He sang, Wow, this place keeps getting weirder and weirder. Um, what is a... Krabby Patty? Belle questioned. SpongeBob's eyes got wide as water balloons. Author's note. Um, I couldn't think of anything else. Hee hee hee. And his jaw dropped to the floor, gaping at her. She, ah, uh, Krabby Patty, never, what, what? He thought unintelligibly. You mean you've never heard of a Krabby Patty? He questioned, one eyebrow cocked. Nope, and neither have I, I said. He relaxed his face and said, Well, do you want to meet my friends? Well, I guess the Patty was forgiven. BPOV. Yeah, sure. How many do you want us to meet, I asked. He had a calculating look on his face, and then his face went back to normal. Well, you'll meet my bestest friend, so about five people, he said with a smile. Okay, follow the talking sponge to meet his friends, who are all sea creatures that talk. That's not weird or crazy at all. I gave Edward a nod, telling him that we should go. He just smiled in return. So he started following him to a pineapple. Under the sea? With windows and a door? That's totally not weird at all. So we're following him and see a snail. SpongeBob picks up the snail and says, Here's my first friend for you to meet, Gary! Then the snail meowed. At vampire speed, I shrieked, Did that snail just meow? That's not right! What kind of messed up place is Bikini Bottom? Edward just looked like he was about to crack up. But he just bit his lip. Okay, now we're going to meet my friend Squidward. SpongeBob said with a really big smile and let Gary down. Now we're following him to a tiki idol thingy mubber house right next door. SpongeBob knocks on the door and a tall teal colored squid steps out. 
What the crow? In an uninterested, nasally voice, he says, What do you want, SpongeBob? Here to annoy me again? No, no, of course not, Squidward. I wanted you to meet my two new friends, Edward and Bella, he practically squealed. Nice to meet you two, but I have to go, Squidward said, and practically slammed the door in our faces. That was rude. I turned to Edward, and he had that same I want to slap him silly look that I had. We turned back to SpongeBob, and he said, Okay, now it's time to meet. Author's note. I'm sorry for the cliffhanger, because I hate them too. But I have not slept, so I am tired. Okay, you could probably guess which characters are going to be in the next chapter. Not Plankton or Mr. Krabs. There is not going to be Plankton in my story. Also, this story is going to go a few more chapters, because Bella and Edward are going to freak. But I'm not telling why. <laughs> anyway, good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the vampires bite. If you want me to continue, review. If not, don't. Chapter 3. Pink Play-Doh. And a dome? Author's note. Wow, I didn't think anyone would like this, and I thought everyone would be like, go crawl under a rock and die, because this story is stupid, and you disgrace the Twilight name, or something like that. Thank you guys for actually liking this story. Oh yeah, I have a couple of questions. Should Sandy die, or the fish that screams, my leg, my leg, or the mermaid man? And if so, by who? Should I name my bunny from Easter? It's blue! Disclaimer. I don't own Twilight or Spongebob, but I know I own my nameless bunny, the chocolate bunny. Woot for me! Last time. Nice to meet you two, but I have to go, Squidward said, and practically slammed the door in our faces. That was rude. I turned to Edward, and he had that same I want to slap him silly look that I had. He turned back to SpongeBob, and he said, Okay, now it's time to meet. EPOV. Patrick Starfish, SpongeBob squealed. Come on, follow me, he said while walking towards a big brown rock. Wow, weirder and weirder. Author's note. I don't like writing the thoughts, so I'm not. <laughs> Unless it's important. So we started walking towards the rock, when all of a sudden the rock swings open like it's a door, and some obese water pink Play-Doh shaped like a star with a bright green and purple Hawaiian shorts comes out. What the, huh? Oh, that must be Patrick the Starfish. Oops. SpongeBob, says Patrick in a dumb idiot voice. What are you doing here? And why are there mutant fish on my lawn? He said, looking at us. SpongeBob starts bouncing up and down and giggles. Weird. Oh, Patrick, these are my two new friends. Edward and Bella, meet Patrick, he said to Bella and I. We said our quiet hellos, and he said, Hi. He picked us up in a hug. I immediately thought of Emmett. Then I remembered that he was way, way smarter than this guy. I started to get uncomfortable when he did not put us down, so I pushed him away from Bella and I with as much strength as needed. I went to stand next to Bella with my arm around her waist. Both turned back to SpongeBob, and he said, Okay, let's go meet Sandy. Follow me, he yelled, skipping. Wow, I didn't think boys skipped. Anyway, he started following to a dome. Inside the dome was a large oak tree with windows and a door, a grass, a bird bath, and a picnic bench. What fish lives in there? Author's note. Sorry it's short, but I need the questions answered to move on with Sandy if you want me to kill her and stuffs. Plus, I need to update a cute fanfic because people want me to. If I get reviews on what to do with Sandy, then I might update tonight. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. If you like it and want to be continued review, if not, don't. Chapter 4. Follow Leader. Venom. Bikini. Author's note. Oh my god, I'm sorry for not updating in like a week. But I've got a new obsession. Though I'm still obsessed with Twilight. It's the Joker! From the Dark Knight, because I watched that movie like 5 billion and 62 trillion times. JK, I just watched it a lot! Only for the Joker though, and I read a lot of Joker fanfics a lot. Okay, so everyone hates Sandy and wants her dead. Cough, me this cough. So she's going to be. If anyone cares, my blue bunny is named Gerald. No one helped me name it except one person. Cough. Mina loves Link to the end of time. Cough. And here we go. Lol, the Dark Knight quote from the Joker. I threes him. Disclaimer. I don't get the point in these things. Anyway, I own nothing. And you can't make me. 
unless you can. Cue dum 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 music. BPOV. Okay, now this is like follow leader. With a sponge as the leader and two vampires following. Odd. So we just stepped in front of the big bubble type structure and SpongeBob hands us astronaut helmets? Me and Edward gave him a questioning look that screams, Why do we need these? Oh, there's no water in the dome, so you can't breathe, SpongeBob said in a dog voice. And now he's pissing me off. He really thinks he's smarter than me. God, I must slap him upside the head. Author's note. Lau, that's what I always try to say to my brother John. Actually, it's, I must slap you upside your head. Why the nerve of that... that sponge? Is your friend all right? SpongeBob's annoying voice interrupted my thoughts. Yeah, she is, I heard Edward reply. And I felt him take my hand and lead me to a chamber-like thing. And this whooshing sound showed up and all the water disappeared from the chamber. It was replaced by air. Good, dry air. I started to greedily suck it in when I caught the most delicious, mouth-watering scent ever. My throat started to burn and venom pooled in my mouth. I immediately cut my air supply off and looked to Edward for help. I opened my mind for him and thought, Edward, I need help. EPOV. Edward, I need help. It's what I heard before the door of the chamber opened and out came a squirrel in a bikini. Then I remembered Bella needed help, so I quickly turned to see her holding her breath and growling only loud enough for vampires to hear her crouched in a rigid position. It happened so fast I couldn't stop it. I had pounced on the squirrel in the bikini and is currently sucking it dry. Oh, there's no. There you go, Sandy haters. She never even spoke a word. Sandy! SpongeBob shrieked so loud you could probably hear it above water. I quickly turned to SpongeBob and started to rip him into shreds. When he was about one quintillion little shreds, I stopped. I turned to see Bella wiping blood off her bottom lip and the back of her hand, frowning. Oh my god! Edward, we have to go now before anyone sees! Bella yelled at the top of her lungs, grabbed her by her waist, and ran, swam as fast as I could to that same place called Bikini Bottom, never to return again. Back to our home in Forks. Author's oh, note. Okay, I know this seems like the end, but I might have Edward and Bella tell the family and stuff if you guys review. Also, anyone see that special SpongeBob episode with Johnny Depp? Because it sucked a lot. Johnny Depp's character was wearing, like, tight, short, purple shorts. Lols! Why so serious? Sincerely, Jenny the Weird, Joker-obsessed girl, and her blue bunny named Gerald. Chapter 5. Animals. Lukewarm. Sobs. Why? Author's note. Sorry. Testing. Obsession with the Joker. Had me not updating. And writer's block bus of new story. I apologize. This is a short chapter. Disclaimer. Vampires drink blood that is red, and they have veins that are blue. I can't own them, but Stephanie Meyer owns one or two. I suck at writing poems. Sponges don't wear ties that are red. They don't have socks that are striped blue. And I don't own them, but that weird guy owns one like he is to. Again, I suck at writing poems. BPOV. We've been running for about ten minutes, and I'm wallowing my gut. I can't believe that squirrel was my singer. A squirrel! I mean, come on! I thought that only happens with a human. God, I can't stand this! You know, you know, Bella, you really don't have to feel guilty for killing Sandy, because she was an animal. I looked straight up at Edward and gawked at him. I mean, come on, she talked, and... and... I don't know. I never actually talked to her, but still, she deserved life. Edward, how can you say that? She was like almost human, and I... I... My body was trembling with tearless sobs. It was like faster and he emerged from the water an Isle of Elm soaking wet he sat me down on the lukewarm sand and ran inside the house he came out with some clothes and a towel he started muttering it's okay it's don't worry it's other things while holding me and hurting my back until I stopped sobbing when I stopped he gave me a kiss on the forehead started undressing me with vampire speed on my head and drying me off he dressed me when I was dry and asked me if I wanted to go back home to Forks I just nodded my head yes. Best was a blur until we reached the white mansion that is now my home. Alice, Emmett, Rosary, Carly, Emmy, Resume, and Jacob came up and asked me why we were home so early, and Edward replied, Boy, do we have a story to tell you. Author's note. How was that? It's bedtime, so I can't write no more. Boo-hoo. 
I would have written more, but you know, angry moms are pretty scary. Shudder. Anyway, please review. It makes the sun in my sky bright and gives me delight. If you want it to be continued review, or the Cookie Monster won't share his cookies with you. Chapter 6 Holy crap! Flying squirrels! Who? Author's note. Holy crap! I didn't update in like... Um, IDK. Anywho, I have reasons. I got bored with the story. But don't worry, I'll update it anyway. I got really obsessive problem with fictional characters. Hehe, <laughs> and got obsessed with like a lot of people. Movies like Batman Begins, Scarecrow, Batman, The Riddler, Joker, The Dark Knight, Red Eye, Jackson Ripner, etc. I got obsessed with trying to get this game for the PS3. It's coming out June 25th, and guess what? It's Batman Arkham Asylum! Hehehe! <laughs> I've been trying to get my mom and dad to pre-order it so I could get it the day it comes out. Almost have them, but not yet. I've been starting to draw more. If anyone wants to see them, PM me, Kay. That would make me smile a lot. I've been keeping my cousin hostage during the weekends, and she doesn't approve of my obsessions, especially my Twilight one. So she doesn't let me come on or near the computer or my arm on touch to read stories or update them. School. Enough said. Ferrets. Read fanfics. A lot of fanfics. Parties! I've been writing poetry. PS3 and Little Big Planet. God, it's so addicting. I am lazy as hell. Yeah, I have so many more, but then you know it would take forever. And I decided I forgot Jasper last chapter. Sorry. So all you reviewers and readers, thank you. You guys are awesome. My friends would lick you guys to death. But they can't so well. And do you remember the Cookie Monster? Well, he gives every one of my reviewers cookies! Anyway, on with the chapter! Disclaimer. You do know that the site's called. That should tell you no one on this site owns anything. Especially not the most awesomest person ever. Me. EPOV. What kind of story, Edward? Jasper asked when he walked through the front door. A strange one. I then told them about what had happened how we found Bikini Bottom, and etc. They all stared at us like I just told them Bella was pregnant again. Edward is telling the truth, so it did happen, guys. So stop staring at us like we all have three heads, Bella sighed. Emmett was the first to unfreeze. Dude, we should totally go back there, he laughed. Maybe the squirrel's a vamp squirrel. Of course, Emmett. I highly doubt that, unless Bella didn't totally drain her. Crossley replied to Emmett. Bella? I think I did. Bella replied nervously. Just then, one of our windows shattered to pieces, and a squirrel with a bikini jumped through, snarling, Oh, sh**! Where is she? The squirrel screeched. E-M-P-O-V! Awesome, I knew it! Come on, Eddie and Jazz, let's kick some vam squirrel butt! I laughed. The squirrel was right about to pounce on Bella. Oh, no, you don't! I yelled while tackling the squirrel to the ground. It started snapping and growling at me. I just laughed in its face. Can I kill it? Yeah, go ahead, Edward called to me while we were taking Bella upstairs. I bit into her neck and ripped her head clean off. Yuck, I hate me biting vampires. Nasty. I gathered all its remains and brought them outside, made sure every piece was shredded thoroughly and burned. Well, that's the last of it, I sighed to myself. <laughs> Echoed in my ears, I whipped my head in that direction so fast it would have broken a human neck saw a yellow disfigured figure with a water-filled helmet on. Who the hell are you? It replied in a girlish boy's voice. An old friend. Author's note. Good. Bad. Pasmivas. Lol. J. Parlay Francaise. And, uh, just to break the fourth wall, I can't, so I imagine what I just said was probably very entertaining, especially if we're going to continue in French. Okay, let's go. Anyway, yeah, it totally doesn't make sense, but... I'm pretty weird like that, hence the name. Um, I'll have to update you, but reviews to help, just so you know. And, yeah, until next time, mon petit coos. Well, it means my little cabbages. Hehehe, <laughs> you guys are cabbages. Chapter 7. Juicy Fruit. What the hell? Arthur's note. OMGs, people actually reviewed. Also, I know how retarded my story is, because, duh, I made it. And it's a reflection of myself. Well, I just totally dissed myself. So yeah. I'm like really weird. Hee <laughs> hee.
And guess what? I just got two kitties! Their names are Bear Joker and Batman! They're so cute! Also, my mom and dad are gonna pre-order Batman Arkham Asylum this week! Yes! I can't wait till it comes out! Well... I need to discuss some things, just little some things, about this story. First, SpongeBob is not a vamp sponge. Even though that would be awesome. He's messed up with the puzzle with a piece, bunch of pieces missing and a bunch of pieces clumped together. Second, I have no idea where this is going to end, so it might be long, very long. So bear with me, peoples. Third, I might not update for a while, because I just made another story called Twisting My Fate. I need to update the vampire or the actor. So I'll update, but spontaneously. And that's all for now. Enjoy, mon petit juice. Haha, <laughs> you guys are... Disclaimer. Yada yada yada. I owns nothing. EMPOV. Yeah, well, who would want to be friends with a chewed up piece of juicy fruit? I called back to it. It's not my fault I look like this! It cried. I used to be beautiful! Yeah, right. Well then, who did this to you? Edward! It spat. Wow, I doubt that unless. That's SpongeBob! Oh, I'm so stupid! Should've had a V8! Well, I'm his brother, so I could get Edward out here... ...to deal with whatever you guys need to deal with. Good! He it muttered. Edward, someone's out here waiting for you! I called in my head. EPOV! What does he want now? Sigh. I'll be right back, Bella. I sighed. Okay, was her soft reply. I ran outside to see what Emmett wanted. My jaw dropped. SpongeBob SquarePants was here. What the hell? What do you want? I growl to the disfigured creature. Can't friends visit once in a while? He said in a mock sad tone. Yeah, friends, but you're not one of mine. So why don't don't you leave now? Sorry, I have some unfinished business. Author's note. Ooh, cliffhanger! What business does SpongeBob have to finish? Between you and me, I don't know. Anyway, if you want to find out, review! Much love, Jenny. One question remains after the conclusion of our story. Is it truly over? Well, only the author knows for sure. But I can tell you that this episode has certainly come to a close. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you can email at pretentiousinternettheater at gmail.com. There is much drama on the internet. But only the best makes pretentious internet theater. Good night. The pleasure was all yours.